All right, YouTubers. Just thought I'd do a quick follow-up on uh, my uh, review video on my uh, Skywatcher EvoStar ADD uh, that I had <clears throat> uh, right around Christmas time. Actually, I got it right before Christmas and did a video on that. So I wanted to show you this mod uh, that I made, and it had to do with uh, the getting the telescope to balance <clears throat> on my AVX mount uh, with uh, with my guide scope because already it's uh, I had a problem with that. So this green dovetail bar, which I have upside down here, but this is the one that comes with the scope with these rings at the bottom, and you can see it's only eight inches long. Uh, it's very short. Uh, it actually will have, well, not these aren't the, the ones, but it has like two screw bolts uh, that it screws on. So they actually work as stops. So on the AVX, on the saddle plate, on moving the bar, uh, these things will, will hang down. And so you don't have a whole lot of room to move it forward or backwards. So if you're doing visual, it's not a problem uh, with a camera, your DSLR or a dedicated adds a uh, weight to the back. And so you can't get your scope moved forward enough on the uh, saddle to get uh, to get it imbalanced. So after some research and searching uh, on websites, what's available as far as a new dovetail bar, I got this one uh, from, from, from Orion. I think it's their longest one they have. So I think it's maybe like 13 inches long um, with it. And I uh, can't remember how much it was off the top of my head. Um, could have been around 30 or 40 bucks, something like that could have been a little bit more, but this is what I need a Vixen style little dovetail bar that I can put in my saddle. And, um, it's just got a number of the slots. I'd like the slots instead of the, just the pre-drill hole because the slots, it gives you a little bit more leverage on where you can put it in and slide it around, but it's got a long slot here. Uh, and the base that you can see where I have a, a bolt uh, through the bottom uh, on each side. And that holds the ring to the top of this here. And uh, the one at the top has also got a slot so I can move that around. I've got probably almost three inches. And uh, so I'll just go here and show you that. So you can see just these are just little M6 bolts. And... Uh, I got the idea from uh, Astro Amy on her website. She had one on just accessories. And so she had this little, found on Amazon, it's just a bunch of different sizes of M6 little uh, hex bolts. And that works perfectly in the groove. And then you can just use an Allen wrench and secure your ring on the bottom. So that's what we're using one there. And that works fantastic on there so you can see and they're also recessed right so you can see there in the slot the head of the hex nut is recessed in there so I have nothing i can move literally this bar either you know go a lot of leeway forward and backwards to get it uh to get it balanced so i'm very pleased very pleased with the uh for the bar for now with that and then i have a guide scope so you can see the guide scope rings and this just holds a little uh, 60 millimeter guide scope. Uh, it's like a 240 millimeter focal length scope that I got off of uh, Amazon because, you know, you just got to find stuff where you can get it. And I think I've got like that for, it came with like 75 bucks. It was under 100 bucks. And it came with the guide scope and it came with the rings and it has the little small little mount, right, that, that will fit in your... Uh, shoe, you know, that typically your uh, finder scopes come come in. also have an 8SE, I'm sorry, not an 8SE, a 6SE, a Celestron Nexstar 6SE. So I had this mounted on the um, uh, on the back of that. So you got the, the little cheap red dot finder. And on the other side, there's two screws that are in there. And you can pull those off and put in a little sh kind of a shoe base. Uh, that will take this type of connector on there. And once again, it's like 20 bucks on Amazon. And that's what I use for that. But here the um, the, the ADED uh, comes with the shoe built into 
the metal back end of the OTA here. And uh, so that's permanent on there. And I really didn't want to pull my finder scope off to uh, to put this in there because then it would it would fit you know very well. And uh, I wanted to have my finder scope when I do my alignment, and that's that's handy. So you can see here I took my um, dovetail bar that came with this and I flipped it upside down and I have one screw. So this actually has just three holes. I believe it's three holes. Oh, it's got two holes that are sort of in the middle and they're threaded. So I went over to Lowe's um, and I bought some screws that would fit this. So these are like the uh, quarter inch, one inch long, and I got a countersunk uh, here. Both of these are the same that fit. So this screw holds my guide scope mount to this. That secures that. And then I have, these are the same. One is just the rounded head and the other is, uh, is a countersunk. But I've got the one inch long, but I do not want it to go through. So there's a, there's a screw base in the top of the ring and that screws into it. But it'll go all the way through and it'll actually hit the top of the OTA and I do not want to do that. So that's why they're out. So what I'm going to do is get some little spacer uh, underneath that gap uh, right there between the bottom of the rail and the top of the mount there is just as a spacer. And then that will prevent the, the screw from going all the way through and, you know, screwing into that. Cause I don't, you, obviously you don't want your screw to hit the top of this and then squeeze it down. Cause that will, damage the, you know, the top of your OTA, put a nice, uh, nasty dimple, uh, in there. And so once I have those spacer in there to close that gap and to provide some resistance where this can only go down so far and not damage that, then this puppy here will be secure on the top of the ring and my guide scope will <clears throat> go right into there. And, um, that will work spectacularly. Uh, with that. So I think that'll be a great solution. I have t taken this out since I made my last video. I have taken it out, looked at it visually, fantastic views, um, looked at the moon at uh, almost full. It must have been about 90%. I had to put my filter in there. I've got a little filter wheel. Uh, I actually got a mechanical uh, filter wheel. Uh, let me just show you that while I'm while I'm mentioning that. Let's see if it's in this box. Here it is here. And these are great little boxes. Uh, got over at Harbor Freight. Very, uh, very cheap. So here is my little Astromania filter wheel. This is a five position wheel for one and a quarter inch filters. And you can see it's got a number on there. So you just turn it manually. And it has little ball bearings that fit in a slot, so it lines it up. And it's just got a cap and a and a cover to keep the dust out. But I have a um, I have a, a UHC ultra high contrast light pollution filter in here, and also a moon filter. So this goes in the image train, uh, and uh, so I use that for uh, astrophotography there. So just going kind of low budget there. And uh, I got that off of Amazon, but it's an Astromania, so they're just reselling through Amazon. But the views were fantastic. Had no hint of uh, chromatic aberration on the moon with it being so bright. That's where you usually see it is on the moon of bright stars. Had none of that. Looked fantastic. Uh, even then, uh, another time I did some uh, astrophotography uh, with this mount and setup. And that came out spectacular. I used my uh, light pollution filter because I'm probably like in a Bortle 8 out my driveway in town. And I did the double cluster. I did, uh, what else did I do? I did the Orion Nebula. And I believe I did uh, Pleiades. And uh, so the, the double cluster came out really well. Just this fantastic results uh, with this scope here. Um, on these, uh, you know, these doublets that have uh, ED glass uh, with it. That really just knocks out the uh, chromatic aberration 
<clears throat> that you may get with the with the acromatic. So the two the doublets, but they have no ED glass on that, and it only uh, focuses two of the main collars, and so that's where you can get that kind of uh, haze around the edges of a purple or bluish uh, with that. But uh, this thing is, I love it. Working well. Got my AVX mount that it's riding on uh, with that. So thumbs up on this. So I always look at, uh, you know, the videos on YouTube. When you look at somebody's rig, I'm always looking at the plate. So how are they mounting? Some used <clears throat> the wider Los Mandes uh, plate. Some will place this, <clears throat> the saddle, the default saddle with the Vixen style with the the new saddle from um, ADM. So he's got like a whole replacement. I think it's about 160 bucks. So this whole top piece, you replace that with one that's a wider and it doesn't use the screws to hold uh, your dovetail in. <clears throat> it has screws that tighten, but it uses like a bar that presses up against it. So you don't get any of the uh, kind of the nuts or the, the bolt dimples and stuff in there. Uh, with that, but, uh, you know, this mounts worked, uh, fantastic for me. Haven't had a problem with it. Works like a charm, uh, with that, but, uh, this is it. So two thumbs up for the Skywatcher Evo Star ADED. And we need clear skies.